Hello everyone, I am Mohammed Hamama, and this is your ASCP preparation camp. In this camp, we will proceed with an explanation of all ASCP lectures from its reading list. In today's video, we will talk about leukocyte development, kinetics, and functions. Leukocytes also known as white blood cells, or WBCs are so named because they are relatively colorless compared to red blood cells. They are divided into two main categories. Granulocytes, such as neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils, have cytoplasm filled with granules that have different staining characteristics and nuclei that are segmented or lobulated. Mononuclear cells, which include monocytes and lymphocytes, have nuclei that are not segmented and are round, oval, indented, or folded we will discuss each type in more detail. The overall function of leukocytes is in mediating immunity either innate, as in phagocytosis by neutrophils, or adaptive, as in the production of antibodies by lymphocytes and plasma cells. Granulocytes Neutrophils Neutrophils are present in the peripheral blood in two forms according to whether the nucleus is segmented or still in a band shape. Segmented neutrophils make up the vast majority of circulating leukocytes. Neutrophil development Begins in the bone marrow. They share a common progenitor with monocytes, called the granulocyte monocyte progenitor. The primary cytokine responsible for stimulating neutrophil production is granulocyte colony stimulating factor. There are three stages of neutrophil development in the bone marrow, the stem cell pool, the proliferation pool, and the maturation pool. The stem cell pool consists of hematopoietic stem cells that are capable of self-renewal and differentiation. The proliferation pool consists of cells that are dividing and includes common myeloid progenitors, also known as colony-forming units granulocyte, erythrocyte, monocyte, and megakaryocyte, granulocyte macrophage progenitors, myeloblasts, promyelocytes, and myelocytes. The third marrow pool is the maturation pool consisting of cells undergoing nuclear maturation that form the marrow reserve and are available for release metamyelocytes, band neutrophils, and segmented neutrophils. Myeloblasts are a type of immature white blood cell that make up 0-3% to of the nucleated cells in the bone marrow, and they measure between 14 and 20 mm in diameter. They are usually classified into three types, type 1, type 2, and type 3. The type 1 myeloblast has a high nucleus to cytoplasm ratio of 8 to 1 to 4 to 1. The nucleus occupies most of the cell, with slightly basophilic cytoplasm, fine nuclear chromatin, and 2 to 4 visible nucleoli. They do not have visible granules when viewed under a light microscope with Romanowski stains. The type 2 myeloblast shows the presence of dispersed primary azurophilic granules in the cytoplasm the number of granules does not exceed 20 per cell. Type 3 myeloblasts have a darker chromatin and a more purple cytoplasm, and they contain more than 20 granules that do not obscure the nucleus. Type 3 myeloblasts are rare in normal bone marrows, but they can be seen in certain types of acute myeloid leukemias. Promyelocytes Promyelocytes are an intermediate stage in the development of white blood cells, comprising 1-5% to of nucleated cells in the bone marrow. They are slightly larger than myeloblasts, measuring between 16 and 25 mm in diameter. They have a round to oval nucleus that is often off-center in a paranuclear halo or HOF that is typically seen in normal promyelocytes but not in malignant promyelocytes of acute promyelocytic leukemia. The cytoplasm is evenly basophilic and full of primary, azurophilic, granules which are the first in a series of granules to be produced during neutrophil maturation. The nucleus is similar to that of myeloblasts except that chromatin clumping heterochromatin may be visible, especially around the edges of the nucleus. They may have one to three nucleoli, but these may be obscured by the granules. Myelocytes are a stage of development in the formation of neutrophils, where cell division stops and the production of secondary specific granules begins. 
They make up 6 to 17% of nucleated cells in the bone marrow. They can be divided into early and late myelocytes, with early myelocytes appearing similar to promyelocytes in size and nuclear characteristics, but with patches of pale pink cytoplasm representing secondary neutrophilic granules. Secondary neutrophilic granules slowly spread through the cell until its cytoplasm is more lavender pink than blue. As the cell divides, the number of primary granules per cell is decreased, and their membrane chemistry changes so that they are much less visible. Late myelocytes are somewhat smaller than promyelocytes, 15 to 18 mm, and the nucleus has considerably more heterochromatin. Nucleoli are difficult to see by light microscopy. Metamyelocytes constitute 3% to 20% of nucleated marrow cells. From this stage forward, the cells are no longer capable of division, and the major morphologic change is in the shape of the nucleus. The nucleus is indented kidney bean-shaped or peanut-shaped, and the chromatin is increasingly clumped. Nucleoli are absent. Synthesis of tertiary granules also known as gelatinase granules may begin during this stage. The size of the metamyelocyte is slightly smaller than that of the myelocyte. The cytoplasm contains very little residual ribonucleic acid, RNA, and therefore little or no basophilia. Bands Constitute a significant portion of the nucleated cells present in the bone marrow, ranging from 9% to 32%. They are also present in the peripheral blood as 0% to 5% of the nucleated cells. During this stage, cytoplasmic basophilia is no longer present and the formation of tertiary granules continues. Additionally, secretory granules also known as secretory vesicles may begin to form. The nucleus of these cells is highly clumped and the indentation in the nucleus that began in the previous stage is now more prominent representing one half the diameter of the nucleus. However, actual segmentation of the nucleus has not yet occurred. Additionally, an elevated band count was previously thought to be useful in the diagnosis of patients with infections. Segmented neutrophils, also known as mature neutrophils, make up between 7% to 30% of the nucleated cells in the bone marrow. They continue to form secretory granules during this stage of maturation. The main difference between segmented neutrophils and bands is the presence of 2 to 5 nuclear lobes that are connected by thin filaments. These cells are the most prevalent in the peripheral blood of adults, making up 50% to 70% of leukocytes. Neutrophil kinetics Neutrophil kinetics refers to the movement and production of neutrophils and their precursors in the bone marrow, peripheral blood, and tissues. Production is estimated to be between 0.9 and 1.0 billion cells per day. The proliferative pool contains about 2.1 billion cells, while the maturation pool contains about 5.6 billion cells, enough for a five-day supply. Transit time from the hematopoietic stem cells to myeloblast is unknown, while transit time from myeloblast to myelocyte is estimated to be around six days, and transit time through the maturation pool is around four to six days. The release of granulocytes from the bone marrow is stimulated by granulocyte colony stimulating factor. In the peripheral blood, neutrophils are divided into the circulating neutrophil pool and the marginated neutrophil pool, with neutrophils in the marginated neutrophil pool loosely localized to the walls of capillaries in tissues such as the liver, spleen, and lung. The half-life of neutrophils in the blood is about 7 hours. Integrins and selectins play a significant role in allowing neutrophils to marginate, exit the blood, and enter the tissues through a process known as diapodesis. Those neutrophils that do not migrate into the tissues eventually undergo apoptosis and are removed by macrophages in the spleen. Neutrophils in the tissues have varying lifespans depending on the presence of infectious or inflammatory agents. In the absence of these agents, the lifespan of neutrophils is measured in hours. Some products of inflammation and infection prolong the lifespan of neutrophils through anti-apoptotic signals, 
while others like MAC-1 trigger their death and phagocytosis. Neutrophil functions. Neutrophils are part of the innate immune system. The major function of neutrophils is phagocytosis and the destruction of foreign material and microorganisms. The process involves seeking and destruction. Chemotactic agents may be produced by microorganisms, by damaged cells, or by other leukocytes such as lymphocytes or other phagocytes, bind to neutrophil receptors, and trigger recruitment to the site of infection or inflammation. Neutrophils first roll along endothelial cells, then diapodesis or transmigration through or between endothelial cells occurs. Tertiary granules containing enzymes are released during transmigration. Neutrophils then migrate in a directional manner toward the greatest concentration of chemotactic agents. Once at the site of infection, neutrophils begin phagocytosis by recognizing and engulfing pathogens, apoptotic cells, or particles. Phagocytosis leads to the formation of a phagosome and the release of reactive oxygen species and bactericidal molecules. Secondary and primary granules may also fuse to the plasma membrane, releasing their contents into the extracellular matrix. Neutrophils also generate neutrophil extracellular traps, nets, which consist of chains of nucleosomes and enzymes and are able to trap and kill bacteria and fungi. Nets are generated when neutrophils die as a result of antibacterial activity. Enitosis has been used to describe this unique form of neutrophil cell death that results in the release of nets. Neutrophils also have a secretory function, producing transcobalamin I or our binder protein, which is necessary for the proper absorption of vitamin B12. In addition, and a variety of cytokines. Second, we have eosinophils. Eosinophils are a type of white blood cell that make up 1-3% to of the nucleated cells in the bone marrow. They also make up 1-3% to of the peripheral blood leukocytes. Development eosinophil development is similar to that described earlier for neutrophils, and evidence indicates that eosinophils arise from the common myeloid progenitor. Eosinophils develop from the common myeloid progenitor through the interaction of interleukin-3, interleukin-5, and granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor with three transcription factors, GATA-1, PU.1, and CCAT enhancer binding proteins. Interleukin-5 is crucial for eosinophil growth and survival. Eosinophilic promyelocytes can be identified cytochemically due to the presence of charcolidin crystal protein in their primary granules and by their large, pale, reddish-orange secondary granules. The first maturation phase that can be identified as eosinophilic using light microscopy and Romanowski staining is the early myelocyte. Eosinophil myelocytes are characterized by the presence of large, pale, reddish-orange secondary granules, along with azure granules in blue cytoplasm. Eosinophil metamyelocytes and bands resemble their neutrophil counterparts with respect to their nuclear shape. Secondary granules increase in number, and a third type of granule is generated called the secretory granule or secretory vesicle. The secondary granules become more distinct and refractory. Eosinophils have a bilobed nucleus and contain characteristic refractal, orange-red secondary granules. When stimulated or activated, mature eosinophils have extensive secretory vesicles. Eosinophil kinetics The process of eosinophils maturing and emerging from the bone marrow takes about 3.5 days. There is a large reserve of eosinophils stored in the marrow. Once they enter circulation, eosinophils have an average lifespan of 18 hours in the bloodstream. However, their lifespan is extended when eosinophilia is present. Typically, eosinophils are found in the respiratory, gastrointestinal, and genitourinary tracts. The survival time of eosinophils in human tissues ranges from 2 to 5 days. Eosinophil functions Eosinophils play a variety of roles in the immune system. They contain granules filled with proteins such as cytokines, chemokines, growth factors, and cations proteins. 
Eosinophils can release these granules through different mechanisms, such as classical exocytosis, compound exocytosis, and piecemeal degranulation. In classical exocytosis, granules move to the plasma membrane, fuse with the plasma membrane, and empty their contents into the extracellular space. Compound exocytosis is when granules fuse together within the eosinophil prior to fusing with the plasma membrane. Piecemeal degranulation, in which secretory vesicles remove specific proteins from the secondary granules. These vesicles then migrate to the plasma membrane and fuse to empty the specific proteins into the extracellular space. They are involved in immune regulation and can act as antigen-presenting cells, promote the proliferation of effector T cells, and regulate mast cell function. They are also known to play a role in defending against parasitic infections and are increased in the presence of allergies. Eosinophils have been linked to airway inflammation and airway remodeling in asthma, and treatment with anti-interleukin-5 has been shown to reduce exacerbations in some patients. Eosinophils also play a role in gastrointestinal disorders such as food allergies, colitis, and inflammatory bowel diseases. Third type of granulocytes is basophils. Basophils are a type of white blood cell that share similarities in appearance and function with mast cells. However, basophils are considered true leukocytes as they mature in the bone marrow and circulate in the blood with granules, while mast cells mature in tissues after leaving the bone marrow. They make up a small portion of white blood cells, between 0 to 2% in circulation and less than 1% in the bone marrow. Basophil Development They develop from progenitors in the bone marrow under the influence of various cytokines, such as interleukin-3. Due to their very small numbers, the stages of basophil maturation are very difficult to observe and have not been well characterized. Immature basophils have round to somewhat lobulated nuclei with only slightly condensed chromatin. Nucleoli may or may not be apparent. The cytoplasm is blue and contains large blue-black secondary granules. Primary azure granules may or may not be seen. Mature basophils contain a lobulated nucleus that is often obscured by its granules. The chromatin pattern, if visible, is clumped. The cytoplasm is colorless and contains large numbers of the characteristic large blue-black granules. Basophil Kinetics The lifespan of a mature basophil is 60 hours. This lifespan of basophils is relatively longer than that of the other granulocytes. This has been attributed to the fact that when they are activated by the cytokine interleukin-3, anti-apoptotic pathways are initiated that cause the prolongation of the basophil lifespan. Basophil functions Play a significant role in both innate and adaptive immunity. They release large quantities of subtype 2 helper T-cell cytokines such as interleukin-4 and interleukin-13 that regulate the subtype 2 helper T-cell immune response. They also induce B cells to produce Ige. Basophils can be induced to produce a mediator of allergic inflammation known as granzyme B. Mast cells can induce basophils to produce and release retinoic acid, a regulator of immune and resident cells in allergic diseases. Basophils play a role in angiogenesis, the control of helminth infections, and acquired immunity against ticks. They are also capable of producing granule proteins in response to activation signals. Mast cells Mast cells are not classified as leukocytes, but are instead considered to be tissue effector cells in allergic responses and inflammatory reactions. They develop from bone marrow and spleen progenitors called mast cell progenitors, which are released into the blood and then migrate to specific tissues such as the intestine and lung. The main factor that controls their development and differentiation is KIT ligand. Mast cells are activated by cross-linking of Ige on their surface by specific allergens, leading to the release of a wide range of substances including lipid mediators, proteases, proteoglycans, and cytokines. They can also be activated independently of Ige to cause inflammatory reactions. 
Mast cells have both innate and adaptive immune functions, such as acting as antigen-presenting cells and inducing the differentiation of subtype 2 helper T cells. Additionally, they can have both pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory effects on the immune response. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, activate notifications to get our new videos, if you like our content please press the like button, and share the video with your friends. If you have any questions leave a comment below. The second type of leukocytes mononuclear cells. Monocytes. Monocytes make up between 2% and 11% of circulating leukocytes. Monocyte development. Monocyte development is a process in which immature cells called monoblasts mature into mature cells called monocytes. Monocyte development is similar to that of neutrophils, as both cell types come from the same precursor cell, called the granulocyte monocyte progenitor. The macrophage colony stimulating factor is the key cytokine that regulates the growth and differentiation of monocytes. The morphologic stages of monocyte development are monoblasts, promonocytes, and monocytes. Monoblasts in the normal bone marrow are very rare and are difficult to distinguish from myeloblasts based on morphology. Promonocytes are intermediate stage cells that are 12 to 18 mm in diameter, with a slightly indented or folded nucleus, delicate chromatin pattern, and scattered azure granules in their cytoplasm. Monocytes are the mature form of these cells, and are larger than neutrophils, with a diameter of 15 to 20 mm. They have a round, oval, or horseshoe-shaped nucleus, loose chromatin pattern, and blue-gray cytoplasm with fine azure granules. Monocyte azure granules are heterogeneous with regard to their content of lysosomal enzymes, peroxidase, nonspecific esterases, and lysozyme. Monocytes enter tissues and mature into macrophages, osteoclasts, or dendritic cells. Monocyte slash macrophage kinetics. Under normal conditions, promonocytes will divide twice in 60 hours to produce a total of four monocytes, however, under increased demand, they can divide four times to yield 16 monocytes in the same time frame. Unlike neutrophils, monocytes do not have a storage pool in the bone marrow and are released immediately into circulation upon maturation. Recent evidence suggests that a large reservoir of immature monocytes may be located in the spleen, which can migrate to sites of tissue injury to aid in wound healing. Monocytes can be found in both a marginal and circulating pool and have a lifespan of around three days. Once in the tissues, monocytes differentiate into macrophages, osteoclasts, or dendritic cells depending on the local environment. Macrophages can be as large as 40 to 50 mm in diameter, have an oval nucleus with a reticulated chromatin pattern, and a pale cytoplasm filled with debris from phagocytized cells or organisms. The lifespan of macrophages depends on whether they are responding to inflammation or infection or are resident macrophages, such as Kupfer cells, which can survive for up to 21 days. Monocyte slash macrophage functions. Monocytes and macrophages play multiple roles in the body, which can be broadly categorized into innate immunity, adaptive immunity, and housekeeping functions. In terms of innate immunity, these cells have the ability to recognize and respond to a wide range of pathogens by means of pattern recognition receptors, which stimulate the production of inflammatory cytokines and phagocytosis. They also produce cytotoxic nitric oxide and have FC and complement receptors to aid in phagocytosis. In terms of adaptive immunity, they act as antigen-presenting cells, interacting with and activating both T and B lymphocytes to initiate an adaptive immune response. Dendritic cells are particularly efficient in this role. For housekeeping functions, they remove debris in dead cells, destroy senescent red blood cells and maintain a storage pool of iron, and synthesize various proteins such as coagulation factors, complement components, interleukins, growth factors, and enzymes. Lymphocytes Lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell that play a crucial role in the immune system. They are divided into three main groups, T-cells, B-cells, 
and natural killer cells. T cells and B cells are involved in adaptive immunity, which is characterized by the ability to recognize and respond to specific antigens. T cells are responsible for cellular immunity and directly attack foreign organisms or cells, while B cells produce antibodies to target and neutralize foreign substances. NK cells, on the other hand, are part of innate immunity and do not require prior exposure to an antigen to respond. They are able to quickly detect and destroy abnormal cells, such as cancer cells, and are thought to play a role in viral clearance. Lymphocytes also have the ability to produce memory cells, which remain in the body after initial exposure to an antigen and allow for a faster and more effective response upon re-exposure. They also have the ability to differentiate self-antigens from non-self-antigens, which is known as tolerance. Lymphocytes are different from other types of white blood cells in several ways. They are not end cells, meaning they are not terminally differentiated and can continue to divide and produce new cells. They also recirculate between the blood and tissues and are capable of rearranging their genetic makeup to produce a wide variety of antibodies and surface receptors. While lymphocytes originate from the bone marrow, T and natural killer cells mature and develop outside of the bone marrow, in the thymus. The kinetics, or the way in which lymphocytes behave and interact, is complex and not fully understood. Lymphocytes typically make up between 18 to 42 percent of circulating white blood cells, with an absolute number of 0.8 to 4.8 billion per liter of blood. Lymphocyte development the development of both B and T cells can be broken down into two phases, antigen-independent and antigen-dependent. Antigen-independent development occurs in the bone marrow and thymus, while antigen-dependent development occurs in secondary lymphatic organs such as the spleen, lymph nodes, tonsils, and mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. B cells, also known as B lymphocytes, begin their development in the bone marrow and go through three stages, pro-B, pre-B, and immature B cells. During these stages, the immunoglobulin gene rearranges to produce a unique antigen receptor for each B cell. The immature B cells, which have not yet been exposed to an antigen, then migrate to secondary lymphatic organs where they reside in specific areas such as lymph node follicles. These immature B cells may come into contact with antigens in these organs, leading to cell division and the production of memory cells and effector cells. Effector B cells are responsible for producing antibodies and are known as plasma cells and plasmacytoid lymphocytes. Circulating lymphocytes are made up of approximately 3 to 21% B cells. T cells, also known as T lymphocytes, begin their development in the thymus a lymphoepithelial organ located in the upper mediastinum. Lymphoid progenitor cells migrate from the bone marrow to the thymic cortex or they undergo antigen receptor gene rearrangement to produce T cell receptors that are unique to each T cell. T cells that react with self-antigens are eliminated through apoptosis. T cells are then divided into two categories, CD4 and CD8, based on the antigens on their surfaces. The remaining immature T cells leave the thymus and migrate to secondary lymphatic organs where they reside in specific areas such as the paracortical regions. They may come into contact with antigens in these organs, leading to cell activation and the production of memory cells or effector T cells. T cells make up 51 to 88 percent of circulating lymphocytes. Natural killer, NK, Cells are a diverse group of cells that are characterized by the presence of surface antigens such as CD56, CD16, CD32, and CD71. They are relatively large compared to other resting lymphocytes due to an increased amount of cytoplasm, which contains azurophilic granules that are peroxidase negative. Circulating lymphocytes are made up of approximately 4-29% natural killer cells. Lymphocyte functions. Lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell that play a crucial role in the immune system. They can be divided into three main types, B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, and natural killer lymphocytes. 
Each type has unique functions that help protect the body from harmful pathogens and foreign invaders. B lymphocytes, also known as B cells, are responsible for producing antibodies, which help to neutralize pathogens and protect the body from infection. B cells also play a role in antigen presentation to T cells, which helps to activate the immune response. They also produce cytokines, which are chemical signals that help to regulate the activity of other cells in the immune system. T lymphocytes, also known as T cells, can be further divided into two main categories, CD4 T cells and CD8 T cells. CD4 T cells, also known as helper T cells, are responsible for activating and coordinating the immune response. They can be further subdivided into subtypes, such as helper T1 cells, helper T2 cells, helper T17 cells, and Treg cells. Each of these subtypes has specific functions, such as mediating immune responses against intracellular pathogens, host defense against extracellular parasites, and maintaining self-tolerance. CD8 T cells, also known as cytotoxic T cells, are capable of killing target cells by secreting granules containing granzyme and perforin, or by activating apoptotic pathways in the target cell. NK lymphocytes, also known as natural killer cells, play a role in innate immunity. They are capable of killing certain tumor cells and virus-infected cells without prior sensitization. Additionally, natural killer cells help to modulate the functions of other cells in the immune system, such as macrophages and T cells. Overall, each type of lymphocyte plays a unique and important role in the immune system, working together to protect the body from harmful pathogens and foreign invaders. Thank you for completing the video, remember to ask for ASCP short notes, and don't forget to subscribe, bye.